Hey everybody, Michael the Maven, and today we're going to be talking about the dynamic range of the four hottest cameras that came out in 2018. I don't have a Z6 at the time of this recording, but I would imagine it's going to be something comparable to the Z7. Hopefully I can do that test in the future. Many of you have asked about the methodology of this test. I buy something called a Stouffer Wedge, which is essentially 41 little ND filters that increase at one third stop intervals. I, use a, I fire a strobe, capture with raw images and bring them into Photoshop raw for analysis. Something I'm looking for is the point at which I can no longer differentiate between adjacent ND filters on this strip. The good news is at lower ISOs, these cameras perform very similarly. So if we're looking at dynamic range only, we're looking between steps 36 and 37. In the case of the a7 III, it's really 37 to 38 very slight advantage to the a7 III. When we increase to ISO 1600, we still see some really excellent performance between all the cameras. I think the Sony has about a one third stop advantage in even the APS-C X-T3, probably about 30 to 31, and we start to see more and more grain. The second part of this test deals with looking for artifacts in these files. The Sony continues to have the 11 plus seven Delta problem, which is referred to as posterization. These are little blocks that will appear next to highlights surrounded by shadows. And for this reason, many astrophotographers stay away from using compressed Sony RAW files when shooting. The Z7 looks really clean, especially at lower ISOs. At higher ISOs, we start to see some color noise. And upon a very close inspection, we can see some fine banding. This has been reported by other shooters as well. I don't know if this is something that's going to show up really well unless you're looking for it, but it's something that I could see. I don't see this as a deal breaker. The Fuji X-T3 for an APS-C camera does very well at ISO 80 and at ISO 160. When we get up to 1600, we're starting to see this rougher grain that's interfering with its dynamic range. Which brings us finally to the EOS R. The EOS R, and I went back and I looked at my other records, it appears to be very similar to the 5D Mark IV. So similar, it's almost the same in terms of dynamic range performance. And unfortunately, I am seeing the same exposure streaking that I saw in those tests. I'll post some of those pictures here so you can see. The exposure streaking happens when you add one or two stops of exposure and then you lift the shadows. You know, maybe it's just my camera, but I'm going to make a separate video on this simply because this is something I've seen in the past and it's very well known, it's very well documented. And my concern is, is th that this is the same problem with the USR. When I do a black cap test on the Canon, seeing pretty heavy banding uh, in and of itself, it's pretty significant. For some shooters, this isn't going to matter if you're not lifting your shadows very hard, if you're not doing a lot of heavy raw post-processing. If you're a landscape shooter like me and you lift shadows a lot, it's probably something you should be aware of. But again, I'll have another video coming on that later. So in conclusion, in terms of dynamic range performance, very similar for, for the most part. I think the full frame cameras have the advantage at higher ISOs. They all have their different artifacts. I don't think most people are going to notice them, but if you enjoyed this video and you wanna learn more about your cameras, check out the crash course videos I have. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.